Today we're investigating a custom controller scam from the seller by the name Foxpad Customs, run by Noelle Lamb, or better known by her screen name, Little T Fox, who has customers who have not yet received their orders anywhere from one to four years after the date of purchase. The total estimated cost of owed merchandise from just the receipts I could find is easily over $5,580.16. Quick maths. I first learned about this from my tip line and the thread posted by Keith, who ordered a rug three years ago and never received it, even though it was still shown as in stock seven months later. And if you look at the website now, it seems like the rugs have been pulled. Yet somehow, Noelle has still been allowed to set up booths at major Smash tournaments and conventions like Supernova this year, where despite the mounting back orders, she can further solicit even more business and sales. How is this possible? I have a running theory, and Noelle has also responded via email, but we'll get to that later. Firstly, a quick word from today's sponsor, Factor. If you're tired of meal prep and cleanup getting between you, a good meal, and your favorite YouTube slop, then oh boy, do I have the solution for you. Factor is a delivery service that provides chef-prepared, ready-to-eat meals in just two minutes. You can set how many meals you want a week, choose your dietary preferences if you want to meet some goals or you're a picky eater. No, John! For the fifth time, they only sell chicken nuggets on the kids' menu. And with over 35 options and 60 add-ons to spice things up, like bread breakfast, snacks, and drinks, you can have your cake and eat it too. In two Jesus. minutes, that is. <laughs> because Factor brings the convenience of fast food with the indulgence of restaurant quality at a cheaper price than ordering delivery yourself. But get this, because I love you guys so much, I'm gonna sweeten the deal. No, 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 I insist, I insist. If you use my link, you get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off the next four boxes. Guys, you, guys, please. Soul, That's what I do. I'm a giver. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen with your phone and say goodbye to meal prep and hello to John. Because he's still hung up about the nuggets thing and I, I think I made him really upset. I'm sorry, John. Thanks to Factor for sponsoring this video. Now, back to serious business. Who is the elusive controller saleswoman Noelle Lamb? Noelle has been an influential contributor to the custom controller space in the Smash community for a very long time. I believe her shop officially launched in 2018, and since then her designs have been used as trophies at tournaments, by top players like Leffen, Tweak, and a cat. That's right, I mentioned Leffen again, I'm putting him in the tags. <laughs> and you can even find traces of her work in collaboration with other controller modders and people creating their own custom builds. Obviously, she must have been fulfilling some orders to gain this kind of reputation. The main issue isn't that she's running some kind of multi-layered scheme to defraud customers without selling like any controllers and it's all just a massive fraudulent storefront. No, it's much simpler than that. After investigating and talking to several disgruntled clients, it can only be described as a level of negligence so severe that it could potentially cost her over half a million dollars in FTC violations alone. For those of you that don't know, FTC stands for the Federal Trade Commission. It's a federal agency that protects consumers from unfair or deceptive business practices. This is hopefully not too complicated, but I'm going to explain the rule for online shipping because I need you to understand just how easy it is to go from a legitimate business to a possible federal investigation for fraud. Simply put, there's a standard rule that mail, internet, and telephone merchandise orders must follow. You may have heard of the 30-day rule or seen it used as a default guarantee in promotional material. That's because if you don't have a reasonable shipment date in place already, you automatically default to having to ship within 30 days. If you exceed that time frame, or let's say for example you exceed your promised window of two months for shipping without any delay notice or consent from the customer, you must promptly cancel the order and provide a full refund. That is, unless you provide a first delay option of 30 days or less past the original shipment date, reasonably notify the customer of their ability to cancel at any time for a refund, and that their silence will be taken as consent. However, if it's for some reason longer than 30 days, they do not provide consent or cancel, you must promptly distribute a refund. 
According to the FTC, sellers are required to ship your order within the time they say it will ship. If no timeline is given, the package must be delivered within 30 days. Now, if it's delayed, the seller must let you know, also give you the option to cancel for a full refund. Now that we hopefully understand the basics of how consumer protection laws work around shipping, let me show you just how fucked up this business is. The major issues seem to have started after the pandemic, which I can empathize with, but as you'll see very shortly, that's just one of many excuses that exist all the way into post-pandemic 2024. In 2020, a post titled Warning Buyer Beware for Fraud Ripoff by Noelle Lamb was posted to Reddit. In this thread created by the user Andrew Nathan, they provide their USPS tracking number after alerting the reader of an extensive delay and unfruitful communications through Noelle's support email. It took them over six months before deciding to charge back their credit card and report her to the Better Business Bureau, which is a private, non-profit organization that catalogs scams and fishy businesses while verifying trustworthy ones, so people can have more confidence in their investments. By using our trusty friend the Wayback Machine and her own post six months prior to the order, we can see that the shipment guarantee is more than likely one to three weeks with a possible delay of an additional one to three weeks from increased demand coinciding with the release of the new game, Smash Ultimate. If you say that you will likely ship within one to three weeks, it's expected for you to ship in one to three weeks because it's assumed any reasonable consumer will infer that that's when their item will be shipped. If you don't provide a definitive delay notice after the third week, as we just learned, you have to cancel and give a refund. Now, I'm uncertain whether this possible one to three week delay counts as an initial delay notice or just a general increased window of the original time, but with how long these orders take, it really doesn't matter either way. By looking at the tracking number, we can see that she created a label for the order, but never dropped it off for delivery. If he placed an order like he said in June, but the shipping label wasn't created until three months later, and the maximum wait time promised is only six weeks, you can start to see the problem here. Hi guys, so for today, this is just for anyone who's waiting for a controller order, who's been asking me where their order is or what's going on. Today I'm working on more orders. Yeah, I'll be sending out today with an update on your order status, so hang tight. You should know by now how rare and difficult finding GameCube controllers actually is. I source them all myself. I get most of them from a connection I have in Japan, and it takes time to find good ones, and then it takes time to have them shipped from Japan, and then it takes time for me to actually make them. They are all made to order. I put blood, sweat, tears into them. I know it's waiting so long to get your order. It really does, and I completely understand, and I apologize for that, but I love the quality of my work, and I know you will too when you get them, so I'm so excited to start shipping more orders. So yeah, um, that's today's plan. It's gonna be heavily working on controllers. Things would only continue to get worse going into 2020. The global lockdowns for COVID started March of 2020, and this affected a lot of businesses. I know that personally because I used to work at a warehouse fulfilling orders, and I was laid off as a result. I get it, okay? Because of a state of emergency, Noelle states that she was unable to receive a large shipment of GameCube controllers from Japan, which added a three to four month delay, and severe respiratory issues added another month. This would all go on top of the average three month wait time for orders. Even though before the pandemic, the shipment representation was one to three weeks for the same controllers, but that's beside the point. If you do the math, that's eight months maximum wait time. Even with this new estimation, which is still the projected time for current orders to this day on her website that hasn't been updated since July 3rd, 2022, she mentions that she's had some people waiting for around 12 months. That is uh, certainly optimistic. The longest wait time for an order that I found currently as of calculating this on September 6th is four years, one month, and 24 days, which was supposed to be for their birthday, by the way. <laughs> A little late to the party, unfortunately. Even if we take into account all the other excuses, like how she's the only one on the production line, handling customer complaints, supply shortages, and the risks associated with paint fumes and workload, how could it possibly take over four years to fulfill an order that previously took anywhere from one week to eight months? The most obvious answer is incompetence. The more complicated answer is an egregious level of entitlement and lack of work ethic as a consequence of her advanced payment structure and taking on way more orders than she could reasonably manage, resulting in the deprioritization of older orders as a way to sustain her income. Even if you're lucky enough to be waiting four years for your order, you'd be happy to find that you're also not entitled to a refund. 
My refund policy can be reviewed at the bottom of the checkout page. Due to the nature of our made-to-order items, I cannot accept refunds or returns. However, every instance is circumstantial, so please don't hesitate to contact me anyway. I will do what I can to help. Otherwise, refunds may only be given within 24 hours after ordering. Being depressed and going on a soul-searching journey is one thing, but when you owe over five grand in undelivered merchandise, that's when we start to have a problem. Don't get me wrong, it's great that you responded to me over a week later, even though I know one of your close friends texted you on September 1st in the afternoon, so I'm certain you knew about it by at least September 2nd. Uh, I only point that out specifically because you mentioned that my email CCing you as a reminder was received on a Friday, and because of personal issues you had to take the weekend off even after seeing my email stating I could only provide a week at the latest for comment. But what's even more interesting is I sent that reminder email on September 4th, which was Wednesday, not Friday and it was three days after you got a text. I have no idea how you got my email two days later, but this interaction contains all of the classic hallmarks from her emails to customers right before they received another one to two year delay. I thought it was a little funny that even her responses are delayed, but <laughs> regardless, I'm happy that you decided to eventually fill me in on the current state of your back orders. But I shouldn't have to get involved to see some progress. I'm not even a paying customer. There are right now customers that have messaged you asking to cancel their orders or for updates that don't yet have the information on their merchandise that I do. Emails like this one from June of 2023, where they're asking you to cancel their order after two years of waiting, and over a year later, they still haven't received a refund. What's crazy is that's not even the only example of this happening. This is, by every possible interpretation of the word, a scam. You sold a product, did not provide the product, and then kept the money. What else would you call that? Am I also supposed to believe that your customer support is so dysfunctional that you missed every one of these emails or messages asking for a refund? I really want to trust that you're at least going to finally ship these remaining orders in a timely fashion. But every other update you've given, like on September 30th, 2023, you said the same thing about how most of your rush order list would be done by October that year. Yet you still have unfinished shipments almost exactly a year later. This screenshot you showed me also doesn't even have everything that's missing, like the GameCube logo rug for Keef, and these aren't fully assembled anyways, so that's just more delays waiting to happen. As I was getting ready to sit down and record this video today, I received confirmation from another customer uh, via email that you were ready to ship their order in the next few days as of October 7th, 2023, and guess who still doesn't have their order? You can't just tell people you're going to ship something and then not ship it. That's fraud. This is a fraudulent business practice and you've done it multiple times. I know it's waiting so long to get your order. It really does. I guess my real question is, if this is your job, then when are you going to start taking your job seriously? Obviously, Foxpat Customs started off as a legitimate business, but as the years passed and the delays worsened, customer support grew more tiresome and volatile, prompting Noelle to close down all her replies. But she would still need to sell new merchandise in order to continue paying for rent, groceries, supplies, etc. I get it. That's understandable. And I could totally sympathize with your situation if you weren't at the same time spending other people's money on vacations and frivolous shit. Hi, I'm gonna show you around the apartment I stayed at while I was in Seoul. I was there for about a month and my best friend was with me for about two weeks. The view was definitely my favorite part of this apartment. When I go back to Korea really soon, I would love to stay here again. We did find this apartment on Airbnb. I am going back to Seoul really soon. I'd love to stay here again, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to because it's kind of expensive for one person. I can only imagine how furious a paying customer must be to watch you take a month-long trip to Korea with your friend and post a girl boss montage when you still haven't shipped their order from three years ago. If you're having supply chain issues and are attempting to cut down excessive wait times due to the pandemic, do you really need to be going to Disney World? was flying to Singapore for the BTS member Suga's concert two months after you already saw him in New Jersey, where the tickets were $305, a necessary business expense? I'd venture to guess no. Now that doesn't mean you can't enjoy yourself once in a while as an entrepreneur, but there's a time and a place. And that time certainly isn't when your business is imploding from your prolonged negligence. But technicals, these are made to order items. They're supposed to be treated like pre-orders. Haven't you ever ordered a custom item from Etsy? You 
Plus, she already said to expect delays. There's nothing wrong here. You yell from the rooftops in defense of this struggling artist? Well, genius, this section's for you. Noelle's shipment guarantees are five to eight months for made-to-order controllers that are no longer listed on the website. Now, let's ignore the fact that she's violated this contract multiple times with wait times far exceeding eight months while issuing empty promises of fulfillment and inaccurate delay notices through her rush order updates. Out the window. Problem solved, right? Well, uh, not exactly. Her shipment guarantees for ready-to-ship items is one week, and for skins and buttons, it's one to two weeks. That's because these are all items that she should already have in stock per her own advertising. No work necessary. So why, pray tell, is there a customer who hasn't received their two sets of buttons in over 14 months? It says it's on its way August 2nd, 2023, and it's been that way for over a year. Their tracking number says the same thing as the guy on Reddit in 2019. She just didn't drop off the package, but she made the label, so it's on the way. Another customer who ordered a ready-to-ship item, which was a Persona 5 Ryuji shell, has been waiting over two years for an order that cost $216. In the time since this order, she's created brand new ready-to-ship designs and is currently selling them at conventions. I've even seen her fulfill one of these online orders within a month, but guess whose shipment is still on the way? Is this how you're managing to not get shut down on Shopify by just creating labels to put into the system, then never dropping off the merchandise to a courier so it remains in a perpetual state of on the way? There's a very good reason why merchants follow the rule as it's outlined by the Federal Trade Commission. If you just decide you're gonna keep taking your customers on a wild goose chase for their merchandise or refunds, they could simply report you in mass to Shopify and Kofi, and since they or their payment processors are obviously going to be FTC compliant because it's a federal standard, the best case scenario is your shop just gets taken down and most of them charge back their orders. The worst case scenario is you get reported to the FTC and they decide to investigate you and sue you for up to $51,744 per violation. Of course, there's a statute of limitations of three years, so, Minus all of those orders, you'd be looking at a humble potential lawsuit of $724,416. And that's just from the violations that I could find. However, I highly doubt that's going to be the case because I'm certain the federal government has much bigger fish to fry and nobody wants to waste their time in small claims court. Unless they're really, really pissed off. But it's still interesting to know the figures we're dealing with and how the law functions regardless. Personally, I don't want to see you get hit with over half a million dollars in lawsuits. Obviously, you're just in way over your own head and there's no way you could reasonably pay that off in your lifetime. It'd be great for everyone if you just gave them what they paid for or a refund. Because if you have time and money to attend conventions, make new designs, and go on vacation, then it shouldn't be unreasonable to expect you to finish however many back orders you already have. Your health, supply chain issues, the weather, or personal problems do not give you the right to other people's money by creating infinite shipment delays and ignoring refund requests. Some of these people purchase these as gifts for loved ones, for their birthday, or because they genuinely wanted to support you and your work. Every single unfulfilled order damages their trust in you, the community that still promotes you, and probably leaves them feeling like shit because they weren't worth your time and are out anywhere from 30 to $300 that they could have used on something else. This is not a Chase Bank money glitch. You owe over $5,000 in merchandise. You're scamming people and you need to stop. I have no idea why last month she was still allowed to run a booth at the biggest Smash event in the world. It took me a week to find all this, because it's been public knowledge for quite some time, and there are dozens of customers expressing their concerns on social media, on Reddit, the custom controller modder Discord, and even in replies to her Instagram posts and tweets, there are multiple people calling her a scammer for not fulfilling orders or having absolutely insane wait times. I shouldn't even have to make this video. But if the Smash community wants to get served by a part-time bartender, be my guest. Also, it's still unbanned hacks. I didn't forget, but it seems like all of his good friends in the Melee community certainly did. I had him up two days ago because I was feeling the same way. He said that he tried to commit suicide and that it was really fucking bad. And I tried to talk to him more and he has not responded. 
I'm I'm scared. I'm actually scared. Seriously, thank you to everyone who reached out, and I will continue to monitor this situation as it unfolds, so hopefully everyone involved can be rightfully compensated. I've also been notified that there might be an update in the Mike Z legal situation, so maybe I'll cover that next. Uh, I'm not sure what the next topic will be, but if you have any stories like this that you'd like to see covered in the future, don't forget to subscribe and hit up my tip line, because even if I don't respond, I do go through it every day and read everything. And another thank you to my lovely patrons and all the wonderful people who make this series of content possible in the first place. Love you guys, including my homies in Latin America. Bring it in there. Bring it in. Come on. I'm not I'm not taking this one back. No, no. Go ahead. There you go. You know, I was just joshing with you guys, pulling your sombrero. And as always, until next time. <laughs>